I met with Michael Reynolds at the Hunt Earthship. A graduate of the University of Cincinnati School of Architecture, he prefers the title biotech to architect, an obvious reference to his outlook on architecture. I commented on the extreme amount of work he has set out for himself. Yeah, it's an awesome amount of physical, mental, and emotional work to basically to do stuff that is, uh, it's been uphill. I had this thing of, uh, there's three things, there's like inspiration, imagination, and intuition. And uh, all three of those things are pretty much squelched in, the, in our world these days. Intuition, imagination, you know, in, inspiration. And so if you can, you know, I think that if uh, there's a huge amount of energy in, in those places. And if you can go there and stay there, then you have a lot more energy. Like, I really, this is all I do. I don't really, I run in the mountains and, uh, you know, but I don't like collect uh, boats or uh, play golf or uh, do anything. This is what I do. This is what I do for, uh, I have another way of looking at things like, uh, like a person, say a normal person will go to the handball court or the spa for physical. They'll go to a church or a synagogue for spiritual. Uh, they'll go to work for financial or money uh, then they'll watch TV for recreation and so there's all these there's four or five different forums that a person puts energy into for their needs this is my job uh, this is my recreation this is my physical everything I do is wrapped up in this and I'm uh, always it's like an adventure I'm always uh, I can't wait to get up in the morning and do it I like to talk about it I like to do it uh, and that makes more energy to overcome the fact that it is ten times as hard to do these kind of buildings as it is to do typical conventional buildings. But I would get bored at that, even if I got filthy rich at it. Michael Reynolds has formed three communities in the Taos, New Mexico area. I asked him how the other two communities were doing. Obviously, if we were looking at building homes for people, then the next step is building a, a, a lot of homes for a lot of people, and you end up talking community. And it's just like everything else. I knew as little about that as I originally knew about catching water or thermal mass. I, there was not really any. There were not really any outright books. I've written some books now, but uh, then more books are being written. But there, when I started doing a lot of this, there wasn't anything to learn from except trial and error. And, you know, I did trial and error. You know, I made buildings that were too hot, buildings that were too cold, buildings that caught too much water, buildings that didn't catch enough water, on and on and on. I learned the hard way, basically, about how to do all of that. Well, it's the same with communities. Communities then involve lots of people. And people, it's, you know, so pe people uh, still, you know, some of them don't get along with each other. Some of them are... Uh, really easy to get along with for a while and then they change and uh, stress changes all of that and so what I'm still looking at is like if people have an easier life they're still they, the issues are easier with them they're, they're, they are less uh, I have seen some of that and we're not perfect here yet you know this is my third attempt at a community right here and Reach community had some success the star community got started but uh, was too far out so we kind of stopped it and did this one and now we're going back out to star but in the process of all that and and trying to make that work within the laws of the land like subdivision law and so on I learned a tremendous amount of uh, things there and got into a whole lot of trouble too uh, but the the bottom line is still, if you make it easier for people to live, they're going to get along with each other better and the planet better, and we have that here. Uh, this is no, you know, serene paradise. There are still people that hardly speak to each other and things like that. But what you have is people, they, they don't need to lock their houses. Nobody's getting raped on the roads. Uh, no, nobody's really getting ripped off. Uh, there's no vandalism. Yeah, there's people that think this person's an idiot or whatever or don't like that person or whatever, but it's still, a, it's still a community. They all are understanding what the nature is of their building 
and uh, why we're all doing it in this community, and there's sort a sort of a uh, you know there's sort of a bond that way that's not really visible, but it's uh, we're seeing some success there. Is what I'm saying in terms of reducing the stress on people and the planet, and having people have it a bit easier. And one of the ways is people. There's a quite a bit of people that in this community that'll get together after working hard all day and go and work on somebody's house for a few hours. You know, drink beer and help them get a wall up. Or and then they'll go over and do this. And it and it and it goes that ends up going beyond the boundaries of uh whether they actually like you or not or whether you're gonna hang out with them six or eight times a week or anything like that. It's just like it's a community, this guy's getting a wall up or this girl's trying to do this and everybody's gonna go over there and and it's happened many times. It's really a neat thing. I haven't seen it, you know, in other places because, um, you know, everybody has to pay everybody or uh, everybody's too tired after uh, stressing just to make their mortgage payment and utility bills and so on. And then, and a lot of the people on my crew are, are live in the community and they, they're not that desperate. You know, some of them work four-day weeks and it's casual. Uh, they're not that desperate for money because they don't need it. They, a lot of them own their own homes, which they all built together, and they don't have utility bills. And, of course, they have cars and gas and food, but they grow some of their own food. So it's just like life is not such a uh, threatening situation. Uh, I think I once put in one of the books uh, uh, that... Uh, I don't know, something about survival. Survival is like a song sung while living or something like that. Survival shouldn't be a war or a, or a, a crisis situation. Uh, survival should just simply be your, you know, a song you sing while you're existing here. It's just, it's, it can be a lot easier and we're seeing that. Well, these buildings are turning into be, to being vehicles toward uh, you know, a better state of mind, basically. You know, and a lot of times I'll think of an, a, another planet or the moon, uh, because if you were to go there, you would have a little more humility about, well, we have got to do on Mars what it takes to exist on Mars. We can't just uh, uh, be so uh, uh, arrogant as to think that we can uh, reconstruct Mars. Well, in fact, we're trying to reconstruct the Earth, and we're not doing a very good job of it because you can't reconstruct the Earth as good as it was. The idea here would be to learn about the Earth, which very few people know about, the physics of it, the biology of it, really learn about it and really try to be, uh, again, harmony is not quite the word, to be, uh, uh, to be able to work with it to make it so we can live here without destroying it because ultimately, uh, you know, if a... If a um, well, I think sometimes I th sort of think we're like bees on a on a on a dog or a person. If one bee stings you, no big deal. Two or three bees sting you, but if like thousand bees sting you, you, you could die, and most likely will. Well, two or three people on this planet, or two or three thousand people on this planet, doing whatever they want to do is no big deal. But six billion people on this planet can just they they won't actually probably not destroy the planet, but they'll destroy the nature of the planet that allowed them to exist here and then some other beings will evolve uh, out of the lava or whatever happens when we uh, upset the balance of the planet the way it is now. And I just think that if people observed that more, learned about it more basically, if it was taught in grade school, uh, the closest thing to it, it's been said both ways, I say this about the Indians, the Indians say this about me, uh, the closest thing to what I'm saying is the way the Indians used to live on this planet. They they know the leaves and the sky and, and the rivers and they knew about them and they they worked with them for their existence. Whereas people, you know, they 
they don't even go out. A lot of people, they, they're removed from the environment. They don't understand. Apparently, you know, you take physics and biology in high school, but you, you don't ever apply it. You know, a lot of people don't even know how to apply it. I do lectures at architectural schools, and they ask me what courses that I would recommend, and, and two of the main courses I recommend are physics and biology. So I think that's where I have found myself now. That's how we got into this, and uh, that's the place that we are at right now.